Competitive gaming, a new form of entertainment media, is spreading like fire around the world. Now we'll take you on an inside look into the world of professional gaming. It all began with Pong, considered and recognized as one of the first competitive video games by many video game enthusiasts. In reality, all video games have been played competitively since their inception. Arcade games were really the start of electronic sports, or eSports as it is more commonly known. They ranked the player's high scores, which encouraged players to come up with the best way to score the most points to be number one on the list. Esports started in 1980 with the first Space Invaders tournament. The tournament attracted around 10,000 participants and established competitive gaming as a mainstream hobby. In 1981, Walter Day formed Twin Galaxies and traveled to arcades recording the high scores. And in 1982, he released his records to the public. Over time, many companies, including Nintendo and Blockbuster, held tournaments open to competitors from around the world. Welcome back to the very first That's Incredible Video Game Invitational. And here are the three players who won at the Iowa competition and are here now to compete. Let's welcome Darren Olson from Calgary, Alberta in Canada. On your mark, get set, go! It wasn't until 1983 that professional gaming made it into the media market. On an episode of That's Incredible, three video gamers were pitted against each other to see who could score the most points the fastest. Whoever got to the target score first would move on to the next game, and whoever got to the finish first won. But that wasn't the last of competitive gaming on television. Australian television also held a series of televised competitions from 1993 until 1998. In the end, arcade-style gaming outgrew itself and has since then died off as a new form of gaming has emerged. In 1993, Doom came out for the personal computer. It was the first game to introduce multiplayer deathmatch and created news groups and chat rooms for gaming. Players would connect via modem to modem and online competitive gaming was born. Online competitive gaming was really the beginning of what was to come. In 1997, professional gaming took a giant leap forward we saw the development of one of the first gaming leagues called the Cyber Athlete Professional League. In 1996, Blizzard entered the professional gaming scene with its new release, StarCraft. Hail, it's about time. StarCraft is a real-time strategy game that pits players against each other as commanders of armies. The popularity of StarCraft in South Korea led to the creation of two network channels that hosted StarCraft tournaments. StarCraft competitors are often viewed as major sports athletes and are regarded as celebrities in their culture. In 2002, the most prominent of the gaming leagues formed, Major League Gaming, or MLG. MLG is the largest organized professional gaming league. With competitors from over 28 different countries and over 1 million competitors online, MLG has been one of the most successful gaming leagues to date and was the first gaming league broadcast on USA Network in 2006. They now are host to many games including Halo Reach, League of Legends, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and StarCraft II. We recently traveled to an MLG event hosted in Columbus, Ohio in order to expose you to the experience of professional gaming. Fans all over the world travel to this three-day event to watch their favorite players compete. You can purchase tickets directly from the organization holding the event, or you can view the event streaming online. Although viewing the event online, you tend to miss out on the atmosphere. Many advertisers are attracted to these events, seeing them as opportunities to invest in this new market and reach out to new customers. It's a beautiful thing, man. Uh, I've been doing it for eight years, um, and uh, just I, I love it. Very passionate about it. Um, a lot of people sell it short, kind of make it seem like it's uh, it's a child sport or something like. Not even a sport, just it's child's play, but it's not. You know, there are people that put their lives, they dedicate themselves to this. It really is something special, um, and uh, the community and the people that you meet, it's like a whole family. This is a beautiful thing. 
you don't know what it's like until you experience an MLG tournament. I mean, you gotta come out of this. So whoever's watching this, you gotta come check it out. Even if you're not a game though, it's always a good time. To be a professional gamer, you need to have dedication, uh, you need to have consistency, like anything in life, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't come easy. You can't uh, you can't just be, be in a team and then leave the team. You have to actually work at it, you know, and also a lot of organization. So uh, that, com that factors into everything. What it takes to play at a professional level is definitely a mental game. You gotta have a good mental game. You can't give up. A lot of people just give up if they're down in a game. We don't like to give up. We never give up, even if we're down 2 in a series. We're going to win the next game, take it game by game until we come back. Uh, so it's just a mental game, be calm, never give up, you know, follow your dreams, all that stuff. You have to look at it like this. Uh, the, best in the, the best in the world are the best for a reason, and that's because they put the best foot forward and they just kept on going. And that's what a lot of these guys do here. I mean, they've been doing it for so long now, and, and they're, they're just, they're amazing. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I am joined by DRG and Marine King Prime. Let's hear from these two players. While MLG was not the first company in this market, where many have failed, it has been one of the most successful, hosting more than 750 matches each month. Um, we have seen a lot of organizations come and go, uh, you know, just bust completely like CPL, WSVG, CGS, they just like blew up and, 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 and died. I think MLG is doing a better job of managing it, but they just need to be careful that they don't fall into that same pit hole of just having to be at the mercy of, of all these you know, big time companies. The fun to attend, these events are long distance away from many of the viewers. But as mentioned before, they are moving to smaller venues such as bars. Many bars across the world are allowing access for the fan base to come, grab something to eat, watch their favorite game being played, and have a beer. I think it's great. I think it's good that it's starting to catch on in America. As you can see, it's stimulating the local economy here, bringing people out from the bars and stuff. I think it's good for the game community. It's a really interesting competitive activity that not enough people are giving credit right now. It's just as fun to me as most other sports. Many of the fans are confident that this new genre of entertainment is here to stay and is not going anywhere but up. It's going to start to blow up. It's no longer as much about like the nerdy image anymore. It's starting to be socially acceptable. I mean, it's tough. I, I bought this MLG pass, but I'm still here because you know I think that communities support where it's really going to be at. I don't really see it adapting well to TV. People are always like, oh, we should, you know, we should try and get on ESPN and we should be on main pass, but it's like. It doesn't really work because I might want to, you know, StarCraft game can go on for an hour, you know, like, and I don't want to watch a commercial in the middle of my game, and it doesn't really work with TV stuff, so it'll continue and it'll get bigger and, and more fun, but it's going to stay in spots like this, with events like MLG, where, you know, they run it all themselves, but they still make money somehow. Um, I bought the pass because I just felt that, like, I'd be such a hypocrite as a fan if I didn't, if I didn't support MLG myself. So it'll it'll grow. Again. At the base level, we have the ability for it to be a very interesting competitive sport. It just depends on what you know America or you know the world thinks about this in comparison to other things they might want to watch at the same time. But I think it can compete. I brought a friend who's not as big of a player who still likes watching. It's about connecting people to say like, look, you know. Um, it's not this weird thing, like it's not such a, it's not such a strange idea to watch someone else play professionally if you just take them out to understand they're doing awesome stuff. So, no girl. One of the many reasons people find esports entertaining is that anyone can get involved at any point in their life. 
it's different in that, like, I watch football, I'm never going to be able to do the jumps and things that wide receivers and stuff are going to do, but when I watch people play Zerg, it's like, oh, if I just focus, I can execute like a pro does, and that's why. Devoting my life to professional gaming, it's, it's interesting, I'm obviously trying to keep up with school, but I obviously got to play Halo a good amount, I only play like two hours a day, so I can you know, find time for school and stuff, but definitely a fun job, come out here. Professional gaming, as you can see, is steadily on the rise. With more and more viewers and fans coming to each event, there is no way to go but up. It's a sport that anyone can get into, and even compete in, and it doesn't take a genius with a high IQ or an athlete in the best shape of their life to become a professional gamer. All it takes is a bit of time and dedication, and you yourself can play among the best in the world of professional gaming.